In this world, you will never truly be happy. No matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, you will never truly be content. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. How could you feel worthless, my dear brothers? How could you feel worthless, my dear sisters? You're not the servant of Alat or Al Uzza or Isa or Krishna or Ganesh. You're not the servant of fashion or money or fame or beauty or power or position. You are the slave of Allah. Allah has chosen you from amongst the billions of human beings. Allah chose you and blessed you with Islam. Pain and suffering only becomes negative if it creates a barrier between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it becomes positive. Pain becomes positive, a motivation for you when it brings you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. On them shall be no fear, nor shall they grieve. Don't get stressed out, Muslims, over things that haven't happened yet. That's fear. And don't get stressed out over things that's already happened. Everything has been decreed. The most difficult pill for the Muslims to swallow is article number six of our deen, the qadr of Allah. We don't want to admit it. We forget about the power of Allah. We forget about the presence of Allah. We forget that we came from a clot and we were nothing. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had to correct everything because we weren't doing anything right. And we get so afraid because we forget. We fear and we forget that Allah is in control. Surely we shall test each and every single one of you with a loss of wealth, with a loss of life, with a loss of profit and trade. So give glad tidings to those who are patient. Those, when they are tested, they say to Allah we belong and to Him we shall return. Upon those people are the blessings and prayers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed, those are the ones who are truly guided. So if you have Allah, you have everything you desire. If you don't have Allah, nothing you desire will make you happy. Nothing. It'll all in the end bring you misery. Wallahi. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. My dear brothers and sisters, I would like to dedicate this talk to every individual who was abandoned by their father, who has loved someone in this world, yet for one reason or another was left abandoned, who has lost someone to death and they couldn't figure out why. There are people across this world who are living in pain and agony, different types of pain, different types of agony. But it always comes down to the same conclusion that shaitan somehow or another finds a way to get the better of them and derails them from the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this lecture is dedicated to all of those individuals. We all have problems in our life, brothers and sisters. I mean, that's the reality. Life is a test. We are going to be tested. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you think that you will be left alone saying you believe? without being tested, like those who came before you were tested, and even the prophets and those who were with them said, when will the help of Allah come? When will the help of Allah come? And then Allah says, the meaning of which is, verily, the help of Allah is always near, subhanAllah. So yes, we will be tested. 
there will be hardship, there will be difficulties. And that is the reality of life. And then you have to realize everything that's happening is from Allah. You know, you don't get depressed. If you forget about Allah, you end up getting depressed. You think things are black and they're gloomy and do no. We don't believe this. We believe in happy endings. No matter how bleak it looks out there, it's dunya. You're in the lowest. Dunya means the lowest place. A dunya. We're on the bottom. There's only up from here. Really, there's only up. This place, wallahi, all of you, I'll give you sincere advice and myself. This place is designed to break your heart. It was designed that way. If you're looking to be happy in the dunya, you're in the wrong place. Trials and tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are not just the calamities that strike us in terms of death, in terms of loss of wealth. But there are also blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us that we don't thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And we don't use them in their appropriate means. If you are not being tested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you do not see that test, then now is the time to realize that you're either being tested by pain or you're being tested by pleasure. They both need the exact same result. You turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The one who is being tested by pain, he seeks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and finds a recourse out. The one who is being tested by pleasure, he thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those blessings and he uses those blessings to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How many wealthy people do you know that have a lot of wealth, who have children that are in tribulation, who have sons that are completely wayward or really look out there. People are in tribulation. You think you're looking at him because he has a big house, he has nice Mercedes. He, if you were in his shoes, you might say, I want to be back in my old shoes, even though they have holes in them. Because at least I can sleep at night. In his shoes, I have to take all these pills to go to sleep. When it comes to tests and trials from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have one of two choices. You can either deal with the pain right now and get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you can delay dealing with the pain, seeking the pity of others, seeking help from others, and prolonging the pain without any recourse. And it's very important to understand the cycles that individuals go through when they go through pain. When they lose someone that they love, when they feel betrayed by an other individual, the very first reaction they have is to isolate themselves. They want to be alone. Now this is more significant when it comes to men. Because men naturally like to deal with their own pain. They don't like to speak about it. Women naturally like to speak about their pain and suffering and that's why their first reaction is going on the phone, going to see their mothers, going to see their friends. However, when it comes to true pain, at one time or another, you will try to isolate yourself. And this is the first thing you need to recognize that this is not what you want to do. This is not a natural reaction, but rather it is shaitan telling you that you will feel better when you're alone because you're the only one that understands what you're going through. It is a deception from shaitan. So while you may need to be alone for a little while, prolonged isolation is very harmful and detrimental to your situation. What you want to do at that time is that short period of time, once you've gotten over that initial rage, that initial pain, then after that you need to get around the believers. You need to get around people who are going to remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he is the Prophet and the Messenger of Allah, he went through stressful moments. What was the solution that Allah gave his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say to him, Oh Muhammad, go and see psychologists and counselors so you could relieve your stress. Go on anti-depression tablets. Get a high dosage of that. Because this is what happens these days. Not that I'm against it saying it's right or wrong. That's not my topic. But I'm saying that the best relief and the best cure and the best medicine for depression and stress is the one that Allah gave Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and gave to the entire ummah. So Allah azza wa gives him the cure and he says, 
فسبح بحمد ربك وكن من الساجدين واعبد ربك حتى ياتيك اليقين this is the cure this is the medicine remember allah azza wa jal and glorify him prostrate to allah and pray to him continue worshiping the lord until you meet your last moment in life and this is what every individual who's going through pain and suffering needs to realize. That this point of pain and suffering is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you. But rather this is a calling from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh my slave, come back to your Lord. Oh my slave, this is a reminder for you that I want to bring you back to me. And this is one of the wisdoms of trials and tribulations. That while we call each other on the phone, while we text message each other, the calling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes through trials and tribulations. And you can react one of two ways. Either you can deal with the pain at that moment and decide to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you can decide to just restrict that pain to yourself, not do anything about it. And then you'll see what it does to your deen. And this is the last stage of the cycle of isolation. That once you're isolated, you will see that eventually your deen starts to disappear. The content of your salah, the khushu on your salah, it disappears. Your ability to recite the Qur'an is no longer there. Your ability to fast during the day, it gets taken away. What did you do differently? What you did differently was you gave yourself into shaitan. And shaitan's promise is that he will lead you astray. He will lead you away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in times of trials and tribulation, you need to seek out the believers. You need to seek out the righteous and let them be your guide and help to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everybody has their tribulations. And it's very rare, people that have happy time, wonderful life, all that, those people are rare. But Ibn Abbas said, the foundation of dunya is tribulation. The best worship is waiting for the ease from Allah to come when you're in hardship. So if Muslim would just have that perspective, they would realize that if I'm just patient here with all these tribulations, I'm in ibadah. You could just be sitting in your house. And if you're muhtasib with Allah, you're in ibadah. But if you're there complaining and woe is me and everything's horrible and it's doom and gloom and it's all black and it's all dark, Allah will give you more things to complain about. And He'll give you some real things to complain about because there's a hadith, if you complain about small calamities, Allah gives you great calamities. Trials and tribulations are a means of purification. They are a means of purifying you so you can go to the purest of places. The punishment of Allah is not out of anger and wrath. The punishment of Allah is a means of cleansing you of your sins. The punishment of Allah is a preparation that you can go into noblest and purest of places. Al-Firdaus Al-A'la and this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends trials and tribulations. And that's why Ibn Abbas anhu said that in every niqma there are three ni'ma. In every tribulation there are three blessings. And the first one is that it could be worse than it is. That it's in your worldly matters and not in your deen. Like if you lose money is money, but if you lose deen you lost everything. So that's a ni'mah. If it's la tij'al musibatana fi dinina. I mean if you think about it, he didn't say la tusibna. Do you see the dua? He didn't say la tusibna ya Allah, don't give us any calamities. He said la tij'al musibatana fi dinina. Don't give us tribulation in our deen. We're going to get tribulation and we know that because that's the nature of dunya. So you're going to get tribulation, but don't make it in deen. Make it in dunya. So that's a ni'mah. You lost your job. Alhamdulillah, I didn't miss my prayers. Alhamdulillah, I, I didn't lose my iman. Alhamdulillah, there's wudu and a place to pray. Because jobs come and go. But deen, once it's gone, Allahu alam if you'll ever get it back. And then the final one, it's in this world. It's fi dunya wa la fil akhirah. As long as the musibah is in this world, it's a ni'mah. Because the real musibah is the musibah in the next world. So if you look at that and realize we're in blessing, wallahi, the whole lot of us. Some may be more than others outwardly, more observable, but the whole ummah is in blessing, wallahi.
Palestine, Kashmir, Shishan, everywhere. We're in Ni'mah, and you have to see it. You have to see it. Because we have, you know, the people of Kufar, they have no Lord. We have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as long as you have Allah, they can't take anything away from you. Everything you desire exists with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you have Allah, you have everything you desire. If you don't have Allah, nothing you desire will make you happy. Nothing. It'll all in the end bring you misery. Wallahi. And that's the truth. It's not a lie. In this world, you will never truly be happy. No matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you, you will never truly be content. You can have the most amount of money in the world. You can have the biggest house. You can have the most beautiful spouse. You can have everything that you desire and you'll never be happy. True contentment and satisfaction comes in the Akhirah alone. It comes when we are in paradise. All of this is about perspective and how you deal with the situation. And that is why it is very important that an individual who goes through trial, he changes his perspective of the trial. It's not a punishment from Allah, it's a means to get closer. It is not a punishment from Allah, it's a calling from Allah that He wants you to come back to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He does not burden a soul more than it can bear. A lot of the times when we go through trials and tribulations, it feels that this trial is so great that there's no one being persecuted more than us at that given moment. But the reality of the situation is, that is not the case. There is always someone who is in a worse predicament than you. Now the situation is already as difficult as it is. You're going through a trial. Why make it worse by not being patient? Because you're only incurring the wrath of Allah. And an individual who's patient and remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they get the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. They get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends off the verse by saying, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمَ الْمُحْتَدُونَ that they are the ones who are truly guided. When you are stressed, remember Allah Azza wa Jal. When you are depressed, pray to Allah Azza wa Jal and ask Allah Azza wa Jal to relieve your stress. When you are so worried, during your moment of stress, say Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Why is it when someone gets angry, they will utter with every single word that comes across their mind except saying Subhanallah. You know why? Because the moment they say Subhanallah, they will calm down. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The close servants to Allah Azza wa Jal, there is no fear on them and there is no sadness for them. What's the point of having all the money of this dunya? and the luxury of this world, and the comfort of this world, and the strength and the power and the influence and the influence that anyone that can obtain in this world, and Allah is not happy from you, what's the point of it? What's the point? Of course you're sad. Of course you're sad. You are sad because Allah is not happy from you. Please Allah, Allah will make you happy. But you want to commit the sins during the day and night, and you want to be happy, and Allah is happy from you, that's impossible. You want to disobey Allah Azza wa Jal and you want Allah to make you happy in return, that will never happen. You want to fall into the haram and you want Allah Azza wa Jal to make you happy, that will never happen. And that's why my brother and sister, when you are sad and depressed, ask yourself that question. Before you look into your bank account, how much money you've got there, and before you make an appointment with a psychologist or a doctor, and before you sit and speak to this person, that person, ask yourself, what's your relationship between you and Allah Azza wa Jal? Because of that relationship, you are sad. Because of your tongue being dry from not remembering Allah Azza wa Jal, you are sad. Wallahi, from the moment you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from the moment you knock on the gate of Allah Azza wa Jal and pray to Him, you feel the taste of happiness in your heart. Because darkness in the heart brings sadness. Darkness in the heart brings sadness. Darkness in the heart brings depression. Darkness in the heart brings stress. 
But light and nur brings happiness. Light and nur brings comfort. Light and nur brings calmness and tranquility. We have the wrong understanding of comfort and tranquility. We think that money is happiness. We think that power is happiness. Wallahi, Allah knows. No one is happy with just money. And no one just happy with fame. You hear every single day, the richest people commit suicide, why? The most famous people on drugs, why? If they were happy, why do they go on drugs for? If they were happy with the money they had, why do they commit suicide for? Dunya is their worry. Dunya is their stress. Dunya is their concern. But subhanallah, you're a mu'min, you're a believer. That's your concern every single day is how to please Allah Azza wa Jal. You sleep the best sleep. You wake up the best. You eat the best. Your heart is the best. Your comfort is the best. Subhanallah. When you please Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah puts happiness in your heart. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes you content. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah azza wa jal will bring you satisfaction. When you please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you from amongst those who is happy. Allah will relieve your stress. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take away your depression. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you concerned and matters are worthy to be concerned. Wallahi, yes, there are moments that we are stressed. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, our only way of happiness and relieving stress from us is to please, to please Allah Azza wa Jalla. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will turn to you. Be with Allah and Allah will be, will be with you. Do the righteous deeds and actions and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you happiness. If you are stressed, fear Allah azza wa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make an opening for you. If you are stuck in a problem, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa will take you out of that problem. If you are depressed, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa will make an opening for you out of that depression. Rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you've got everything. Rely on Allah Azza wa Jalla and Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will give you everything. Rely on Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala and Allah Azza wa Jalla will grant you everything. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that if any of you is ever tried by a tribulation, then let him remember his trial and tribulation through my calamity. For indeed, it is the greatest of trials. What is happening here, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is alluding to the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the greatest trial that every Muslim goes through without even realizing it. And let's look at why. You look at the status of the Prophet ﷺ, he was every man's best friend. So people lost their best friends, people lost their consolers. The wives of the Prophet lost their husband. The Muslim community lost their leader. The old women in the community who had no one to tell their problems to, they used to tell it to the Messenger of Allah. They lost the ones who would hear them out. Now imagine the greatest of all trials. The Prophet ﷺ was our direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet ﷺ was our direct link to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In times of trials and tribulation, you have a decision to make. Either you can get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that is your way to paradise. Or you can decide to live with your pain, seek the pity of people, and let the pain get worse, and create your own destruction. He who has Allah has everything. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alleviates the pain of every believer and of every Muslim, and that he makes it a path to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather than a path that leads away from him. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.
عليكم ورحمة الله والبكاة تاع <تصفيق> أحب يو إن very good day بنا أنا أحب that you have um high iman I want to tell you don't ever be sad because Allah is with you this life is not worth worth of being sad so you should always smile even sometimes you feel sad. I also feel I spent a lot of time because I really just want to go home to Jenny and I want to listen to good and I want to read Quran all day. If you ever feel sad, you should just go do so good and you should remember that you are from the Muslim Ummah. That means that everyone is making dua for you, including me. So just keep your head high and be strong because because after hardship is ease. Just like Allah promised in the Quran. When you feel sad, remember this life is just a test. And soon it will be over. And you will be happy forever in Jannah. You won't be sad. Everything that's meant to happen to you Allah wanted it to happen to you. So be happy for that. Don't be sad. You are Muslim and Allah loves you. So love him back. I know I'm just a little girl. Please listen to me when I talk. When you get to Jenny, you won't even remember these times. And um, when something bad happens to you or you get hurt, Allah will take the bad things away. Inshallah, you'll find your way. Sorry about that. Sometimes Allah tests us with hardships, but Allah tests the people that He loves. So He loves you. And I love you too so much. I hope this made you happy. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.